我的变化，我给你。你凭什么出了我的变化？你反对。At the end of 2005, Asia Weekly in Hong Kong featured 14 rights defense lawyers from the mainland as Persons of the Year. Past years had had Jiang Zemin and Lee Kuan Yew. Later, they had Aung San Suu Kyi and the popular blogger Han Han. Few people had heard of rights defense lawyers. Until reporters called them, they didn't know they had been put on the magazine cover. Who were they? What mountains had they moved? At the turn of the 21st century, China's reform and opening was 20 years old. Commercial media was booming, and the Internet gave Chinese a new space to speak freely. They talked about public affairs as never before. China joined the WTO and won its first Olympic bid. The state leaders preached a harmonious society. People held a rosy outlook for the future, while the country's problems rushed to the surface. These 14 weren't all practicing lawyers. Some were legal scholars and advocates, and one was a barefoot lawyer from the countryside. They were among the pioneers of the rights defense movement. When a young man named Sun Jigong was detained and beaten to death because he didn't show ID, Xu Jiyong, Tung Biao and Yu Jiang fought to end custody and repatriation. They defended the owner of a private oil field in Shaanxi province from government misappropriation. When Cheng Guangcheng revealed violent enforcement of the one-child policy, more lawyers joined the case and defended Chen when he was arrested. They were there when the editor of Southern Metropolis Daily faced retaliation for reporting on Sun Jigong and SARS. Li Bai Guang helped farmers when the government took their land. Guo Feixiang joined villagers in Guangdong in their fight against corrupt local officials. Pu Jiqiang defended the authors of a report when local officials accused them of slander. Li Heping led nine lawyers in defending villagers in Zhejiang who were arrested in a clash with police over pollution. Collectively, they had defended a long list of political prisoners. I like doing this work, and I think this is my life's value. I think China must face such a problem, because in our country, there are such people who have suffered such a hard time. This country's poverty cannot be built on the poverty of the poor. We have seen these people in the poverty of the poor. 我们这些维权人士的一个共同的理念，就是用合法的这种非暴力的途径，争取法律的权利，通过一个一个的个案，最后可以推动中国政治制度的这个民主化转型。我们无非就是想做点好事，想做点好人。我的一个出发点做这些事情，是我自己快活，是我这我不这样做我自己不舒服，我也在寻找这种生活的快乐。我呢叫李和平。做律师啊，我挺喜欢的。从两千零二年开始呢，当时就是说呢，因为我鉴于了一些就被大家称为那个敏感案件的案件。那时候第一个是杨子丽，他们那个叫新青年学会，这个有四个人，呃，检察院指控他们颠覆国家政权，我第一次为他们辩护，算是就是说了解到了就是说呢这种涉及到政治方面的良心方方方面的问题，当时都感觉到挺吃惊的。最开始辩护的时候呢，有点，还有点不知所措，因为就是说，当时对这种就是说政治方面的什么那个民主共和、宪政，还了解很少，就是只会从这种刑法的这种叫什么犯罪构成方面去辩护，而这个犯罪构成这个方面辩护啊，根本就无法在这这类案件中进行辩护。In 2005, Gao Zhisheng. Wrote to China's leadership four times about the brutal suppression of Falun Gong and how he himself had been followed. 在我动手写这封信时，人们善意地告诫我，法轮功问题是敏感的问题，是政治问题。作为律师，我们深谙中国这种特殊的社会形势。一个权力正当行使的社会里，有敏感问题的存在，足见一些权力行使的扭曲。
、非正当性及不磊落。另一方面，政治问题为什么公民就不能去谈？不让谈的政治是谁的政治？不让谈的政治绝非是非正当性的政治。当一个社会就剩下一种声音时，那是一种什么样的局面？我每天出家门都有都做好了不回家门的准备。In 2006, Gao Zhisheng was kidnapped and subjected to indescribable torture. In December, they sentenced him to three years with a five-year suspended sentence for inciting subversion of state power. But in those five years, he was disappeared again and again for a total of three years' time. 昨天晚上回到家里面。这个看到我的这个妻子、孩子两个孩子的鞋子，他们的鞋都是放在原地未动。我回去，应该说我的感情就就完全失控了，因为这是我最亲的三个人，像断线的风筝一样，一年我说一点兴趣都没有。Even though it was extremely dangerous to defend Falun Gong practitioners in court, in April 2007, Beijing lawyers Li Heping, Li Xiangbing, Zhang Lihui, Teng Biao, and Wu Hongwei represented Falun Gong practitioners Wang Bo and others in their second trial. In the court, Li Heping read a defense statement arguing that the Constitution is supreme and faith is not a crime. This statement would become a classic defense of religious freedom for years to come. Two days before National Day 2007 at 5 p.m., Li Heping was leaving the office when two people near a newsstand outside his office threw a hood over him and put him in an unmarked car. They drove through rush hour traffic to a gated facility and dragged him to a basement. Yeah,你的又给你脱光，我不让脱，他们他们几个人就是帮忙给你又给你踩，给你摘掉了。最后执行员一个裤头，并且呢，他拿那个电棍，帮就往你身上往你身上电的，并且就是说呢拿那个空
Guo Jianmei is China's first public interest lawyer and the founder of a women's legal aid NGO. Inspired by the 1995 World Conference on Women in Beijing, she and her legal team have represented thousands of cases on discrimination, labor rights, violence against women, and rural women's land rights. Over 20 plus years, they have won 50% of their cases. Ta 我带着这个当事人到了法院去的时候，那个法官就，你是律师吗？我说我是啊。他说你怎么会为这种代理？我说对呀，这就是我们律师应该做的。最后得到的一纸判决是给我甩在地上的，拿到那判决我们是败诉
In the years since, more than ten lawyers have represented Tibetan defendants. Li Dunyong, Chang Bo Yang, Pu Jiqiang, Li Feng Ping, Tong Biao, Tang Tianhao, Ran Tong, Liang Xiaojun, Wang Chuanjiang, Lin Qi Lei. But the authorities obstructed the rights defense lawyers' involvement in most of the cases. Having learned a lesson from 2008, after the Urumqi protests in July 2009, judicial authorities prohibited lawyers from representing Uyghur defendants. When the earthquake hit Wenchuan on May 12, 2008, the old school buildings were basically intact, but the new ones collapsed. Over 7,000 students and teachers died. Tang Zhuoren, a writer from Chengdu, spent 10 months putting together a citizen's report. While the Chinese government has never published any report on the Tofu Dregs school buildings and the children who died. Tan Zhuoren was arrested and accused of subverting state power. Pu Jiqiang was his defense lawyer. In August, Tan Zhuoren was convicted and sentenced to five years in prison. After the trial, it was reported that Pu Jiqiang went into the men's room and broke down in tears. In 2008, thousands of infants got sick from milk powder tainted with melamine. Over 100 lawyers, including Xu Zhiyong, Peng Jian, Li Xiangbing, and Li Fangping, provided legal assistance to hundreds of families in lawsuits and sought compensation for victims from the state. Zhao Lianhai, a father who led parents to seek accountability, was sentenced to two and a half years in prison. <laughs> In 2008, a group of lawyers tried to have a direct election for the Beijing Bar Association. They believed that the bar not only failed to protect their right to practice, but that it had been weaponized against them. 虽然北京和有些地方已经是律师担任会长、副会长或者是监事长 现在零八年的五月份，有了十几个律师吧，就大家决定还是想把这个做起来。白天呃，很多律师都要做自己的事情，去办案，怎么等等，然后到下午的时候，呃，大家会从不同的地方集中到一同说，一直讨论如何制定
呃凌晨两三点钟。八月底的时候，呃，我们要求直选的这个文件通过网络公开。九月五号的时候，当时是第一个呃反应是北京市律师协会，呃，他出了一个严正声明。严正声明的主要内容呢，它是对我们这样一个行动，呃，进行政治定性。那次与司法局方面交涉，不是我一个人去的。呃，记得当时是在司法局呃一个办公室，呃，我们这一方有四五个人，司法局那方除了徐亚丽珠，还有他的三四个属下。呃，我们就直选问题进行了激烈的争论。呃，我们当然认为社会发展到呃一个比较成熟的状态，凭什么呃司司法局就说我们呃要求脱离国情，呃不符合实际，呃等等。呃，肖丽珠当时应该是比较凶的，她对我们进行了指责，呃，说我们。走得太远了，呃，这样做很危险。呃，当时的选举规则是，每一个律师代表的候选人是由三家律师事务所来进行推荐。那我们当时呢，安会所和另外两家律师事务所就推荐了一个候选人，就是我们所的一个维权律师。但是司法局他就通不过，这样呢，他不让我们推举之后呢，我们这一个所。在二十六个人中间，确定了四个候选人，四个候选人是独立候选人。因为这次选举，由于我们的败票行动，导致了整个官方的所所有的人都不超过半数。按照选举的基本的规则，他必须进行第二轮选举。但是呢，是由司法局操纵的这个选举委员会呢。把我们票数靠前的我们这四个人，仍然不注意第二轮的选举。实际上，从宪法层面上来讲，就剥夺了我们被选举权这个机会，被削减了。Because of their involvement between 2008 and 2010, seven lawyers were disbarred for providing legal aid to Tibetans or participating in the failed elections. Of the Beijing Bar Association, in 2008, a number of lawyers across China signed Charter 08. In the fall of 2010, Leo Xiaobo was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize to the chagrin of the Chinese government. In early 2011, the Jasmine Revolution erupted in the Arab countries. Sparking anonymous calls online to meet at specific locations and times in major Chinese cities, the authorities went on the alert. Hundreds were detained between February and April, including famed artist Ai Weiwei and nine lawyers: Jiang Tianyong, Tang Biao, Tang Jitian, Tang Jingling, Li Tiantian, Leo Shihui, Leo Zhengqing. And Leo Xiaoyuan, detainees were held in secret locations for days or months. They were interrogated, and they were beaten and tortured. In July 2012, the overseas edition of the People's Daily published an article that claimed the United States' pivot to Asia was an attempt to contain China. And that five groups of people in China were part of this strategy. Wei Qian lawyers were among them. When Xi Jinping came to power in the spring and summer of 2013, activists were swept up en masse. The New Citizens Movement had been hosting gatherings in cities across China. In Guangdong Province, a group of grassroots activists had taken to the streets. Among those detained were the leaders of the New Citizens Movement, including Xu Jiyong, Ding Xiaxi, Guo Feixiang, and Tang Jingling. They were charged with inciting subversion, picking quarrels, or illegal assembly. The human rights lawyers mobilized in response. 
as many as sixty of them defended detainees in the first or second instances.我们想一方面是援助受害的孩子另外一方面呢我们还希望能够以司法的渠道来援助这些孩子就是把他纳入到司法的渠道里面去这样的话呢既能解决问题又能够以司法的方式解决问题实际上对法治有贡献所以我们
，因为这个是我们做了那个时候做了二十多年律师了，从来没听说过这种事情。所以后来这个一怒之下，就我跟那个蒋元明律师，我们俩都退庭了嘛。按照法律，保周子，我就跟他们说啊，我像丁家喜这些人的行为，是不是大多数人认为都不是犯罪，都是公民的正常行为，是的吧？那就不应该。来处置，追究他们的刑事责任。现在处置了，按照我国刑法第三百九十九条的规定，明知没有犯罪事实追究的，就是对方犯罪。我就问他，对方犯不犯罪？你都不敢认识，你还编什么货？什么辩护策略？本案的实质就是办案的公权者犯罪。你要不触及这点，编什么货 ？From Urumqi in the northwest to Guangzhou in the south. A dozen lawyers came to defend the Uyghur economist Ilham Toti and the rights movement pioneers Guo Feixiong and Tang Jingling. Um, Ilham Toti came to defend the u y 分裂国家罪的话，原本应该是不成立的。不但把它呃认定，而且做一个无期的啊、呃、判处的话，啊、呃，这远远超乎我个人的预期。那么伊利哈木对他的案件的上诉，也第一次是写了一百一十五页的上诉材料。呃，我星期一这个星期中星期一去会见他的时候，他又写了呃九页，又补充了九页。那么伊利哈木听说这个案件不开庭审理，他是提出了意见，然后当时也写了一份申请书，要求法院开庭审理。但是第二省法院，也就是新疆维吾尔自治区高级法院，没有接受他的那个要求。嗯、呃，在今天啊、呃、上午十一点，在新疆维吾尔自治区的开庭所，呃，做了宣判。在一审、第二审，我们律师是根据案件的事实去进行，啊，相关的法律规定做的是无罪辩护。郭飞雄先生呢，认为他虽然他这种情况下权利受到了侵害，我们在无奈之下，在辩护权利受到损害的情况下，我们也要努力的去去为他辩护，把事情道理说清楚。根据他的起诉书呢，他认为是南州事件的那几天的聚集。南州南方报业集团门口的人群的聚集，扰乱了南方报业集团的正常的工作。他指责郭飞雄，呃，鼓动，呃，指使一些人去举牌演讲，呃，说这个举牌和演讲的过程当中，导致了这个秩序的破坏。呃，我对结果不乐观。呃，但是我和郭飞雄先生，我们将在法庭上说证明他无罪。宣判以后进入一个程序，就是法官会询问三位所谓的被告人，他们对这个判决的态度是否会提起上诉。所以，唐律师发表了他自己的意见。他的意见是，对于这样的一个呃政权制之下的法庭，他是不准备上诉的。但是他会诉诸于向人民和上帝上诉，他个人做出这样的选择，是对于整个司法体系的一个某种程度上的蔑视，所以他的选择我是表示尊重。我认为唐金林他们三个人所从事的这些行为，呃，即便是依照现有的法律来说，也并不构成犯罪，而只是对于。呃，言论、出版等一些基本人权的践行，他们所从事的非暴力不合作，无论是理念的推行，还是具体的从事一些相关的工作，无非是为了在这个时代推动整个中国国家和社会有一个和平的转型。所以，我认为这种判罪显然是一种政治迫害行为。In 2005, Guo Feixiong was an activist working for a small publisher, and Tang Jingling was a young lawyer, both in Guangzhou. That summer, the village of Taishi, on the outskirts of Guangzhou, agitated to remove corrupt local officials from office, and Guo provided legal aid. The detentions soon started. Riot police arrived, but Guo Feixiong. 
envisioned how China could peacefully transition to a democracy. Months later, Taishi held an election for the village committee under the PRC Organic Law of Village Committees under the watchful eyes of the armed police. But the detained villagers were not released. The newly elected leaders began stepping down. Guo Feixiang was detained. Lawyer Guo Yan and Tang Jingling went door to door to sign power of attorney documents to represent detained villagers. Their car was attacked. Guo Feixiang was arrested in 2006 and sentenced to five years. In 2013, less than two years after his release from prison, he was arrested again and sentenced to six years, spending 11 of the last 15 years in jail. Tang Jingling was disbarred because of his work in Taishi. He became an activist. He was one of the nine lawyers who were detained and tortured during the Jasmine protests. He was thrown into prison in 2014 with a five-year sentence. Tangu 这中间又发生了母亲金优过度何然尝试的事，深深刺痛我的心。我连笨上都不能，只有在铁窗下长哭不已。这样的日子，如同被扔在火窑，又如同被人踩在脚下。From the New Citizens Movement to the Southern Street Movement to supporting occupying Central in Hong Kong. Hundreds were detained and tried from 2013 to 2014. Finding lawyers to represent the detainees became an arduous process. Against this backdrop, three disbarred lawyers, Wang Cheng, Tang Jitian, and Jiang Tianyong, risked arrest to create the China Human Rights Lawyers Group. Several hundred lawyers joined, making it a platform to connect human rights lawyers. On July 9, 2015, China launched a mass detention of human rights lawyers. In just a few days, dozens of lawyers and human rights defenders were arrested. 300 lawyers were briefly detained or threatened. Among those taken into custody were several lawyers from the Beijing Fengrui firm, lawyers who took part in a restaurant gathering and lawyers who were involved in public affairs. In November 2016, Jiang Tianyong was arrested for organizing the rescue of 709 detainees. All detained lawyers were placed under residential surveillance in a designated location, a form of secret jail, where they were subjected to similar torture that seems to come from the same handbook. 呃半夜的十一点半多的时候呃我把我先生包中军和我儿子包卓轩呃送上呃出租车去首都机场当时我儿子是要去澳大利亚到那那边去读高中
，他们两个上了出租车之后呢，然后我我就回到家里。他的飞机大概是七月九号凌晨两点，两点多钟的一个飞机，我就等到一点多，快两点多的时候，他们一直都给我打电话，我就有点着急，就给他们打电话，但是这个电话一直打不通。我们到了机场，记得是二号航站楼，可能也是太晚了，十二点多来钟。机场挺空荡的，没什么人，但机场大厅里呢，嗯、呃，我记得很清楚，就是有用显微板隔开了，把大厅隔开了。呃，显微板有中间有个门，有个女的站着呢，这正好有个工作人员走过去，我就问他，我说进入国际候机厅怎么走啊？他就指的那道门，他说就从这儿进去，完我就到那门那儿，呃，那女的就要那个护照，我就把我跟我儿子的护照，嗯，给他了，他看了一下子，我们就进去，进去之后就是一台安检机，我把那个我的箱子和我儿子箱子放上安检机之后，刚一过安检机，迎面就来了七八个人，我看至少是七八个人。就上来就问了一嘴，说：“包龙军吗？”我说：“啊，是。”呼下去，他们就拥到我身边，就几个人一边一个就架着我了。我说：“你们谁？干什么？”他说：“那个，我们是北京公安局的。”就拖着我就往外走。我说：“什么事儿？”我一回头一看，我儿子也被两两三个人架着，在我旁边走着。完，我就说：“我说。”这个可能跟我们自己有有有关系，跟孩子没有任何关系。我说你们放开孩子，他们也不理我。呃，就是一直架着我就走走出机场那个候机厅，我到了门外，我看门外天黑黑的，但是，呃，好多警车，闪着警灯。呃，他们还有那个，我看还有那个，就是照相的，啪啪啪闪。就像咱们看那电影《抓捕江洋大盗》啊，就那个场景差不多。这时那完就有人咔给我套上个黑手套，就给我塞塞进一一部车里。我大概差不多也就是两点钟左右的时候吧，就我家门呢，就是突然就好像就有人在撬门，然后我就问是谁，嗯、呃。这个声音敲门的声音就停止了。我从猫眼儿往外看呢，就也看不到什么，因为外边一片黑嘛。呃，我就又回回到卧室，大概是两点多钟那样子，就突然间我们家的这个灯都灭了，就断电了，然后就呃互联网也被切断了。三点多那样子，就是就突然就听门。呃，非常大的那种，就，呃，好像是电钻在转门的那个声音，声音非常大。我赶紧我就从床上跳下，跳到地上了。然后我就拨电话，我想我打电话通知一个朋友。结果我这边刚刚把这个电话拨通，呃，还没有，就是对方还没有接的过程中，突然间这个门门外就闯进来一个人。进来这个人呢，感我感觉他好像是在他头顶带了一盏灯。就是说，嗯，你不许动。然后我们是北京公安局的，大概好像是这样子。然后我说，我说那你，我说那你是谁呢？我说你出示你的证件，你为什么就你怎么闯到我们家来了呢？然后我就我就问了，我刚刚就是说了这么一句话，突然间就一下冲进来几十个人，反正特别多的人，感觉就把房间就几个房间都给占满了。然后他们一下冲进来，就把我一下就给。呃，脸朝下边，把我摁到床上，然后给我上的背靠，把黑头套就直接戴上了。戴上之后，就几个人就把我拖出去，就给我拖着出去的。因为我我不肯走嘛，我说你们这都是什么人啊？我就我我这都莫名其妙嘛，这都。然后就拖着我就给拖出门，然后拖进电电梯里，拖进电梯之后就嗯下了楼之后给我塞到那个。呃，一辆楼下就是停的一辆汽车里，我戴着那个黑头套，被他们呢，呃，接进了一个大院大院落里边，然后
七拐八拐的呢，呃，进入了一一一座建筑里面，呃，这个大概是在这个建筑里面的上到了二楼啊，一个房间，这个房间大概有十五到二二十平米吧。房间一进门呢，呃，右手边就是卫生间，然后继续往里边走呢，啊、呃，右手。靠近卫生间这墙，这个墙壁这块是一张床，床的这个大概是对面这个有一张桌子啊，就是靠走廊这边。房间走到头啊，就是一呃，就是一扇窗户啊，而这个窗户呢是呃都是封闭的啊，常年这个都是拉着窗帘然后在这个房间里面呢，呃，始终寸步不离，有两个呃穿便装的武警战士，一天二十四小时，大概是分成五班到六班啊。即便睡觉的时候，也是床头一个，床尾一个，啊，其中是一个主哨啊，一个副哨，啊，这个主哨负责这个发号施令，负责对外沟通啊。这个副哨呢，就是说拿着一个小本子，呃，负责对你观进行观察和记录，每三到五分钟，对你对你的这个表情啊，或者你的这种状态进行一种记录。呃，我在被抓之前呢，我妻子呃告诉我她怀孕了，本身呢我就有两个孩子啊，呃，妻子负担就很重。他又再怀一个孩子的话，呃，我又被抓，我我就很难想象他会，呃，怎么面对。所以呢，呃，我在里面的第一件事，首先就想呢，给他写一封信啊，无论如何呢，就是想，呃，鼓励他，让他能够更加的坚强，对吧？来应对这个危机。可是呢，我们是没办法拿到，呃，既不让我们看书，也不可能给我们什么纸啊、笔呀、啊。这种情况下，我呢就是绝食，七十二小时的绝食啊。这个专案组的来提提讯我呢，问，呃，给我交流，我就要求要给我纸和笔，我要给我妻子写信，他们给我了。纸和笔，我也给妻子写了信，我就要求他们，呃，给我这个要，呃，传传递给我妻子。但是我出来以后，我知道，仅仅就这么一一个人道主义的这么一一封家信，在这样危急的情况下呢，他们也没有，呃，转给我妻子。七零九当中呢，因为我被抓了以后，我遭受的这种，呃，酷刑呢，主要就是剥夺睡眠。后来都记不清楚到底是四天五夜还是五天五夜。这几天几夜当中呢，我是呃是一就是一分钟都没有合过眼，而且呢还很亢奋，因为当时呢我可能也缺乏经验，因为。和对方这种还进行各种的唇枪舌剑的这种言语抗辩，他们搞这种剥夺睡眠呢，其实就是为了逼着让我们，呃，让我早一点认罪。那么经过这几天几夜以后，呃，有一天我记得最后一天呢是凌晨了，大概是凌晨左右，突然身体就觉得不行了，就说觉得自己身上好冷，但是呢，同时你知道这个骨头啊就开始就有点热，当时。倒那会儿，就是倒的那一瞬间，我就觉得，哎呀，我可能这次可能要死了，就是那种就是很模糊的那种意思，就觉得，哎呀，这次可能是要死了。我记得我躺到床上，他们当时的国宝就没有来，因为他们是不让我睡觉的，就没有来阻止。他们可能已经发现了我这个有点不正常了。但是我这一觉睡了很久，我不知道睡了多久，但醒来以后，你知道吗？全身呢、啊，哎呀，你全身都是疼的，就是那骨头啊，就是那种就像火烤的一样。我后来问王宇，王宇也有类似的经历。
。我是前期呢，因为我特别我特别不配合，我跟他就是对抗的特别猛、嗯，所以当时呢，呃，他就把我送到这个地方呢，是呃类似看守所的一个地方。天快黑了，我感觉那个时候，然后。就来了一个人，特别凶，嗯，他说他是这个看守所的队长，我就给他举一系列，我说你有这个抓我过程，这是违法是吧？然后我说你关着我，你把我关在这儿也是违法的。然后我我说我要找这个住检，结果他走了之后，很快他就带了一个特别凶的一个壮汉。然后手里拿着一一串那个手铐脚镣，然后过来就把那个手铐脚镣就把我给戴上。他那个手铐脚镣，他不是普通的我们那个手铐，他是两个呃铁金上了锈的铁金圆环，然后把你手啊，就是给给你就是完全的这种这这种就绑到一起。脚镣脚镣呢，呃也是铁环。两个铁环，然后锁到那个脚上，然后，呃，那个中间呢，非常粗的那种铁链，就是一环一环扣一环的那种的那个铁链吧，特别重。我最开始的时候，嗯、呃，刚戴上之后根本就没有办法走路，就只能说，嗯，上厕所的时候就提着那个链子，用手给它提起来。然后这样子走也是觉得特别重，这个这个这个手铐脚镣就一戴就是七天七夜呀、啊，二十四小时戴的。呃，到了天津的这个呃监局场所呀，开始他们是给我们提供了一一把靠背椅，呃，也允许我们在在这个两个战士之间呢可以走动走动。呃，大概过了一个星期左右呢。他们把那个靠背椅拿走了，然后换了一个墩子给我坐。这个墩子大概就是一个屁股这么大，坐上去也没有扶手，也没有靠背。那么从此呢，也不允许你，呃，在走动，就是一天就让你这样坐着。我曾经因为，呃，要求他们修改这个笔录啊。被严管过一个月，这个一个月要在这个墩子上啊，一天要做十六个小时，做到什么一个状态呢？就是你感觉要去小便，但是你你到了厕所呢，结不出小便来。夕阳被抓后，后来我们了解到，被关在长沙市德雅路七百三十二号国防科技大学第一干休所。在那里面的一座二层楼上进行了六个月的秘密羁押，之后他被转到了看守所。陈建刚律师和刘振清律师在二零一六年十二月底到二零一七年一月初，在看守所对谢阳进行了七次会见，随后将会见笔录向世界公开。七零九被抓的人只有两个人见到了自己的律师，谢阳是其中之一。我们第一回见他，因为他在里面，他已经关了一年半了，他受了那么多折磨，他他那个给我们就是给我说起来，他他就哭了，就就就这种，一开始见到我就就就就哭了。他当时啊，穿那个蓝色的看守所的呃制服一样的。那个头发很长，然后胡茬的，呃，又又很憔悴。呃，那警察可是说，给他说，你闺女不是叫谢雅娟吗？在哪个学校上学，我们都知道。我告诉你，谢阳，你老婆在哪个学校呃工作，我们都知道。呃，谢阳你也知道，这个长沙的交通状况，他们开车出个车祸，这也是很正常的。其实很明显，那就是我们可以造个车祸，让让他们。一一块杀掉嘛，谢阳听那个话，谢阳就，呃，就你很恐惧嘛，很恐惧，因为我当时听那个话，我那个愤怒啊，我那个那个桌子，我我哐哐的捶那桌子，妈的，我就当时真是想想杀人的那种状态。
。呃，我们被转移到天津以后，他们就放开手脚，逼我们就范。一五年十月一日上午九点左右，我清晰的听到我头顶楼上的房间里，呃，有一个人重重的摔到了地板上，然后就没有声音了。呃，感觉应该是有人遭到了电刑。从十月一一日呃深夜到十月十日啊，几乎每一天每一个深夜，呃，我的楼上的房间里都有审讯和这个有人呻呻吟啊哀嚎的声音。当时我也感到很恐惧。然后他就像他们就像猪一样把我，把我当成猪一样挨着。我之前在刚到北京的时候，有有个律师事务所的一个老律师，六六十来岁了。我那时候刚三十出头，然后我们在一块儿沟通的时候，他是深有体会。他就说：“他说共产党啊，他们是只有你想不到，没有他做不到。真是他这个折磨人的这种方式，真，你要是不是亲身经历的话，你真是想不到，一点都想不到。” After Jiang Tianyong was detained in November 2016 for organizing a rescue effort of the 709 detainees and rallying international support. The CCP propaganda apparatus issued a video accusing Jiang and the community of human rights lawyers of hyping sensitive cases and fanning public opinion on behalf of overseas forces. Later, after rumors of Jiang being injured during detention, the CCP media issued another video. 二零一六年十二月，大概是十九号左右。下午，一个审讯人员因为对我的回答不满，突然冲上来，对我的腿使劲踢。那以后，腿就不能正常行走，一直瘸着。我的腿上起了一个被踢的部位，起了一个很大的血泡。他们不得不叫来了医生。第一次。啊，抽了三大针管，血水。过两天，呃，又抽了两大管。几个月后才，呃，呃，才能正常行走。刚一能够正常行走的时候，他们就，啊、呃，让我穿上一个短短裤、T 恤衫，让我到走走廊上去，啊、呃，来回的走。他们给我拍照、拍视频。并且向外部公布了视频，嗯、呃，目的是显示我在里面啊、呃、是好的，能够散步。他们啊、呃、特别喜欢打耳光，啊、呃、拧脸。他们所做所做的这些啊、呃、侮辱性的这些一切，目的就是要把你的这种人格。碾碎！我往往在那种时候，啊、嗯，感觉到这种极度的被侮辱的时候，哎呀，就觉得万念俱灰，就觉得想放弃一切，啊，生不如死。我是在二零一五年八月份的时候，接受完于母亲的委托，作为他的辩护人。现在我家里人的话肯定是很担心，是吧？他们也是没有，对以前没有这方面的经历，也不知道最终就还有这么黑暗，嗯、呃，而且也不知道，就是说我会顶着这么大的压力去做一些事情。结束王宇的代理工作一年以后，就是二零一七年七月份的时候，湖南绿协去对我进行立案，说我扰乱法律秩序，应该是二零一七年。底的时候，他们把他移送到湖南省司法厅，然后就给呃说要调查我的执照
。他们表面上的理由是因为我代理法轮功的案件，然后和法官有个争执，我有热七零九是吧？很多律师站出来给给他们辩护，最多的时候律师达到快近六十位律师，但是七零九这种抓捕行动并没有。呃，让当局感觉到，就是说他们的目标，就是很顺利的实现。在二零一七年开始的时候，他们就开始策划如何对律师进行进一步的打压。呃，他们的主要目主要目标可能转转移到对这个七零九的那些律师和七零九的辩护律师的这个调查，呃，行政处罚上面。这个狭义的七零九，他可能就是七月九号开始所抓捕的那些律师；广义的话，他可能更多的就包括这么一个对律师的一个整体的围剿行动。From 2016 to early 2022, more than 40 human rights lawyers were disbarred, and the number is growing. Another 11 human rights lawyers and two legal activists have been imprisoned. Human rights lawyers who are still practicing face increasing threats and interference, and in more cases are being forcibly replaced by government-assigned lawyers. Human rights lawyers travel between detention centers, prosecutors' offices, and courts, covering the length and breadth of China, and spend more time traveling than with their families. Few people know what they do. They often face threats from judiciary officials and police. They are not always remembered. Even the police taunt them. Who remembers you when you are missing and in jail? Who cares about you? They are often barred from traveling outside China on grounds of endangering China's national security. Many families are separated in two countries, unable to reunite for years. No one knows how lawyers who have lost their licenses will live and rebuild. Not made of steel, they suffer pain, tears, and weakness, but they do not stop. In a country where the criminal conviction rate is over 99 percent, they have had little success defending their clients. That makes them an insistent voice of reason in a drama of the absurd. Some of their peers ridicule them as less skilled lawyers, but the so-called skills are probably just evasion, self-censorship, or even collusion. In China, where there is no rule of law, they are a group of people who believe in the law. In a country where everyone is in shackles, they are the ones who dance with shackles. Their value is in the present, and also. For the future, Pu Jiechang said, "They are putting their stamp on a changing era." Liu Xiaoyuan said, "The value of being a lawyer may take a lifetime to prove." Lawyers are in this Chinese military dictatorship under a natural growth group. Just because of the Chinese military and the pressure of human rights. 才有了一些有良知、有理性的律师秉承这个人权理念站出来，为这些人权受害者进行辩护、帮助。这所以，人权律师这个群体出现，我觉得也是历史的必然。呃，如果我要是没有介入公益，呃，就是说案件，没有介入人权案件的话，我只是一个普通律师的话，那么这个职业对我的吸引力是很一般的，可以说。啊，但是就因为我深度的介入了这个公益案件和人权案件，我我特别喜欢这个职业。我从二零零七年开始职业，到二零一九年离开中国，我的律师生涯就结束了。我还是一个成长中的律师，这对于我来说是一个很大的损失。在中国，一个人发光的时间很短，中国政府会立即把你扑灭。我被锁在老太宾馆招待所房间里面的老虎凳上，每天二十四小时，十天的时间，这是一种极端的酷刑。我们这些人的所做的这些事儿
包括我自二零一三年以来，虽然我自己很惭愧，但是被别人称之为所谓人权律师做的这些工作，虽然都是点滴的微小的事情，但是自豪的来讲，我认为我们是在推动这个社会的进步。如果我们不是被奖励的话，也不应当被如此对待。我是很感谢我这个让我付出了代价的人权律师的经历。啊，是我有我有损失，但我得到的更多，我得到的更多，因为他释放了我自己，我我经历了自己，就是你从此，你有了一个不同的一个人生的一个体验，而且这个人生体验，显然比我之前那种浑浑噩噩的这种生涯要有价值的多。做一个律师该做的事，呃，无所谓恐惧，能做就继续做，坚持做。虽然说可能这个辩护对结果影响不大，但是一定要有律师站出来给他们辩护。所以你从这个我这个案子上，你可以看到他们的随意性、任意性，呃，并不是说这个国家的法律的破坏者，并不是这些普通的老百姓，并不是是说这些律师，而是就是这些公家法内的一些司法者。这种遭遇，我觉得确实不堪回首。啊，想起来都很，很害怕，很痛苦，很难受。我不能认真的去回想这些事，对。但是，其实我又想，我这个人其实很简单，很简单。我就是想比较自由的活着。我一想，我我这做的有什么错呢？就因为我做这样的事情，就受到这样对待，我怎么想就觉得这个现实是必须得改变。我的这。Anyway, I'm very pleased to be here to welcome both our online audience and our audience here in the Sheikh Zayed Theater today.
so much for coming. Uh, as lawyer, as the last lawyer, Jiang Yinong said, um, the, uh, the only way to, to um, solve this problem is to let the whole world know. So today we got the, what, 30 more people on the country. We have, uh, we have more, uh, more. Another group and another group. So I'm very pleased uh, because uh, um, I think you are today so that the young people have come here with the thinkers or the um, future leaders. It's very important whether you're studying law or not, it's uh, actually irrelevant. It's a story, and their story has a much broader um, significance and meaning. So, um, my name is Yashue, Cao Yashue. I live in Washington, D.C. I'm the founder and the editor of ChinaChange.org. Uh, so, if you have time to visit our site. Um, so, for the last 10 years, we've been writing about uh, uh, human rights, rule of law, and civil society in China. So, when I started a few years ago, the idea is to bring um, uh, provide a, uh, a platform uh, to provide some assistance to um, the human rights workers, uh, the lawyers, the dissidents, uh, the civil society members, the NGO workers who uh, face uh, repression, uh, and to help them, uh, to help bring their messages outside and their story outside. So that was the uh, original uh, idea. Uh, but uh, since 2015, the 709 uh, incident, if you haven't heard about the 709 incident before, you can simply put on uh, into uh, Google search, it will uh, yield whole lot of uh, reports and documentation. So since 2015, uh, at that time, China Change is about uh, three years old. And uh, I, um, uh, we have uh, written a lot about them, uh, comment uh, translate a commentary about them. Uh, when uh, after 2017, when their stories, especially the horrific, horrific torture stories, came out, uh, we translated a lot of, uh, of their accounts. Uh, we interviewed them and. Uh, uh, so um, last year, this film was finished the last March. So last year, the year before last year, in 2021, I really felt the need to put this uh, scattered information and story together and uh, through a uh, historical perspective. So this story. Uh, is not just about the seven or nine lawyers. So we start from 20 years ago. And uh, um, so we have this film. Uh, as you can see, the visual quality is rather poor. Uh, that's why we can't bring it to the movie theater. And the production is very, very basic. I mean, I'm a little embarrassed to call it a documentary, but a documentary it is. Uh, so we worked with uh, um, half of the footage uh, is simply what we accumulated through our interviews over the years. And some, uh, uh, some of the, er another half of the footage are from other sources, from eyewitness interviews of the lawyers, a few of them, and from uh, uh, Professor Ai Xiaoming's documentaries on the New Citizens Movement because a lot of lawyers got involved in there and it's a very um, emblematic case uh, that they fought over the years. So, um, so we cobbled together this film uh, to tell a uh, somewhat comprehensive uh, story uh, of the human rights lawyers in the last 20 years. And uh, um, uh, one thing I'm particularly proud, in the 67, uh, 68 minutes, we have uh, over 30 lawyers speaking in their own words, 
not me, not the, uh, well, we do have a narrator, but uh, just for necessity, but uh, but uh, we just uh, uh, used the uh, 68 minute to the maximum to uh, to let our audience appear their own uh, themselves in their own words. So that's very very gratifying. Um, so that's that. Um, I don't have much. Oh, one one last thing I want to say is that. Uh, um, a lot of them uh, are uh, have been this far uh, for leaving from traveling outside the country. So I only personally met two of them in this film. Oh, of all Chinese human rights lawyers, I only work, I worked in the field for ten years. I only met two of them. So since 2015. Uh, most of them have been barred until today from traveling outside the country. They don't, the Chinese government does not want these lawyers to receive the international recognitions, though they have received the awards. Uh, this year, uh, uh, lawyer Jiang Tianyong uh, received, the, uh, well, last year, 2022, received the International Bar Association's Human Rights Award. And uh, several other lawyers uh, uh, in the past few years received, uh, including American Bar Association's inaugural uh, Human Rights Award in 2016, it was awarded to one the, 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 the woman lawyer who saw who described how she was uh, put in shadows and uh, uh, iron chains. So, um, but uh, but uh, in general, the the reason. Uh, the Chinese government barred them from uh, uh, leaving, uh, from uh, traveling outside China, is that uh, they don't want them to go around to, let's say, they come in front of you. Wouldn't you love to see them and hear uh, themselves? If I could, I don't want to talk to you guys. I just want, I would rather be a companion to one or several of the lawyers and just be their translator. You know, but they can't be here. So I'm very happy, uh, as a final note uh, in my little speech, I'm very happy to be, uh, I'm very deeply honored and deeply humbled to be uh, their ambassador. Thank you so much for being here. I do want to emphasize that we do have 1,300 people who are also listening to us online when visiting the movie. And so we'll be alternating between questions from the audience and questions from our audience online. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, if you have a question, who's going to join me here? Yeah, I want to forget my uh, friend's phone phone sword. He's uh, 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 my colleague uh, in the human rights uh, field and uh, also works with the human rights lawyers a lot, providing uh, humanitarian support and uh, support for their work, uh, which we can't go into details. <laughs> but uh, um, uh, I, uh, if you have any questions, I mean, I'll write it down. So the first question is going to be from our audience online. Mm -hmm. The first one is, is there a future for rights defense in China after Sinai Um uh, Around 2017, since 2017, I have been saying, um, which is also the consensus, among the uh, activists in China. I've been saying this for several years. I said, uh, okay, this chapter, the, the rights movement chapter, uh, we, the movie talked about from the very beginning. So it, uh, it, occur, uh, it emerged along with the internet, with the arrival of the internet. The internet made it, the rights movement uh, um, possible. And uh, so, um, with the with the internet, with the uh, new uh, market-oriented uh, media, 
with the lawyers. These are just average lawyers. They're called human rights lawyers because they are uh, uh, courageous enough to take on cases that uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, they do not make mo uh, money from. Not doesn't make uh, too much money, but uh, uh, exposes them to to great risk. Uh, but uh, they have done what they uh, they did anyway. So. Um, several things worked in the first, uh, uh, let's say, first 12 years of the, the new century. And, uh, but uh, since Xi Jinping took over, uh, the, uh, the, the, the human rights um, landscape has shifted quite a bit. Um, as uh, the movie, it, it's very fast paced. It also mentioned a uh, article in uh, by a uh, uh, national security uh, think tank person uh, with, uh, that listed a five group of uh, people, so the new black fat five categories. And, and human rights lawyer, rights lawyer is the first category. So they identified these people as the major threats to China's stability. And they think they are cooking up a color revolution of some kind. So the, the, uh, the crackdown is really, really um, not just uh, limited to the lawyers. The, uh, the dissidents, the human rights activists, uh, the, uh, China uses a host of measures to uh, put them in prison, uh, make sure they can never register the, a uh, social media account. Uh, in China, no matter how you change your ID, they, they find you. You can't get an account. A lot of them can't even have a WeChat or Weibo account. Um, locally, local police keeps a very, very close watch on you. Very close. And just the other day, just I think yesterday or day before yesterday, a human rights lawyer, he didn't speak in this film, but his uh, photo uh, quickly uh, flashed somewhere. A human rights lawyer in Chengdu find a, a black box, like a, like a phone-sized thing, in, uh, on the, uh, in the frame under his car. He said, what is this? So friends identified as a, a GPS tracking uh, device that can also listen in like a, a uh, listening device. So uh, that's, that's the, uh, I mean, I know, I know it's unthinkable, right? Why do they do this to a lawyer? <laughs> uh, you, you know, they want to know uh, what you're talking, <laughs> uh, what, where you're going, what you're doing. Um, so yes, the uh, uh, human rights uh, uh, defense movement has been, uh, going uh, through a, a very depressed um, stage for on and off more than um, five, six years. And by now, it's a very scattered, very, very, um, not much you can do. Uh, one of the scenes when I first started China Change is that uh, uh, during the trial of dissidents or uh, human, uh, or um, activists, uh, the uh, European and American diplomats will go to uh, the court. Of course, they wouldn't allow to uh, be allowed to into the court, but uh, they will uh, meet with the activists and other citizens outside the court, and what they do is that they call their action surround and watch. So it's a form of uh, lending support. By law, citizens should be allowed into the court, just like the China's, many of the China's laws are just as good as ours here, but they're never, uh, only on the paper, never in, in, in that, they're never real. So these citizens and the concerned uh, foreign diplomats will go, and that's, that, uh, that went on for years. Not anymore, not anymore. Today, a lot of these uh, political trials 
were held in secret. Or giving you a date for closed door, door trial, trial and the uh, streets will be blocked, uh, fenced off from blocks away, so you can't even get close. Um, so all these measures I mentioned, working together, this whole uh, rights movement, it's not, uh, uh, the people are still there, uh, the beliefs are still there, but the actions are, um, have become impossible. Uh, let me add to that. Um, yeah, I think, uh, as Yashir said, the, the situation is uh, uh, very dark. Uh, uh, it's getting darker. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it always, uh, uh, it always uh, you know, brief uh, lawyers who are willing to try to try harder. Uh, you know, it's, we have seen in the uh, documentary people are continuing, but uh, in a uh, different fashion. Maybe we will only know these efforts years later, uh, but there are definitely you know, a lot of efforts uh, in trying to break this, uh, you know, to do more. Thank you. Thank you for this. I, I want to quickly add, that uh, uh, Society is a Chinese society in particular. Uh, society, it's like a, it's like a, a high pressure cook. <laughs> a lot of things are boiling there, so you might dampen to, uh, one thing. But uh, hey, we just had the blank paper revolution. A whole, a host of uh, different people. I have never known them before. You know, I know some feminists, activists. But these people, these people are just from a, the, they are these young people, and actually not just the young people, but the young people as the main body. Uh, they came out of nowhere, uh, I mean, not out of nowhere, just not out of uh, uh, where we know, uh, and not the, from the people, among the people we know. So, um, what I want to say is that uh, while one movement uh, might have been depressed and cracked down, scattered, uh, new things are coming. Thank you. Thank you both for this crucial testimony. It really means a lot. Um, now we'll open up the questions to the audience if anyone has a question. Yes? Um, in terms of what you would like the international community to do. International law is sort of notoriously weak and has no real enforcement. How do you see international law playing a part in situations like these, given that there is no enforcement body in international law right now? Um, you're right, there's no. <laughs> We have, a, a, we and the, especially there are other human rights organizations uh, during the human rights lawyers' detention and in other cases, we file one after um, filing reports with the UN, with the, the UN uh, Human Rights Council, and uh, attend uh, report. We don't, China Change doesn't do that, but we have a sister. Um, organizations um, that do that, uh, uh, you know, attending the uh, periodical review, universal periodical review, I think it's called. Um, and uh, really, you know, I mean, it's depressing to say, nothing has happened. And China, uh, in the 1990s, in the first 10 years of this century, China still, uh, would still give, uh, make concession, human rights concessions on um, uh, either in exchange for in, uh, for for some something in exchange for something from the international um, community or uh, just look better, just look better for them. These days they are they don't care, uh, they don't care. It's uh, uh, it's a different uh, picture. So. But uh, does that mean that uh, we, uh, uh, outside China, mm, 
well, this brings the question, what do we do? Um, I say we continue, hammer, uh, continue hammering it, uh, doing the useless things like our film, and we just keep, uh, we keep, uh, there's a period. Um, that when we live uh, at the present, uh, we don't see how it would impact we're making or what effect is coming. But I am, for example, the 30 of you are here, today you go back, you have uh, some, don't you have some good food for thought? Uh, does that change you a little bit? You know, somewhat, uh, uh, you next time you look at China a little differently, maybe? Uh, you know, we, we're, we're, we're moving things. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm hopeful. Uh, yeah, thank you. That's a very good question. I mean, overall, just uh, awareness, uh, pressure, uh, work uh, in the long term, uh, short term, yeah, we don't really see like immediate uh, impact. Um, but uh, yeah, over all these years, this is what I mean, we learned. Uh, we we have to make our voice heard. And uh, we have been marginalized, even though you know this. This is the truth about China. It's different China that most people don't see every day. That's what we want to talk about. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's also about what a different China could be, future, in which people are fighting for. And uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, legal actions here, uh, like the. the uh, my first activity here in the United States was to sue Li Peng uh, for, uh, you know, for the Tiananmen massacre uh, you know, under, uh, I think it's tort law. Or, you know, uh, but uh, uh, later, I think it was kind of uh, tuned down by the uh, judicial system here intentionally. Uh, but there are a lot, I, I believe, a lot more we can do. Uh, for example, there are US companies uh, that's uh, selling the product uh, made by um, the uh, political prisoners in China. We have one case like this. Uh, uh, and uh, um, yeah, in terms of US law, I think uh, there are lots of uh, you know, areas that need to be changed to address this kind of issue because China completely changed you know, global trade technology that has profound implications. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of more uh, work to be done uh, in, on the legal front uh, that uh, can create much uh, profound impact for the future. Uh, we should definitely pursue that. Thank you. Uh, so for our next question, we have many potential law students in our audience today. For those who are interested, how would you advise them to engage with Rights law more in their academic and professional lives. How would they engage more with the law, uh, rights law in academic and professional lives? Well, um, very straightforwardly, I think if you are, I imagine if you uh, you are a law student, you look at these Chinese lawyers. Uh, I have a friend who is a, a Chinese American, born and raised here, a lawyer from a, a got his degree from NYU. <clears throat> he watched this film. He's already practicing for good several years. Um, he practiced. Uh, he watched this. He said, uh, um, "I felt silent for a while, for a long while, and I felt very, very humble." Um, so he didn't uh, elaborate further. I think uh, if we, uh, if a law student, a lawyer watching this, get a little bit of feeling of that, um, um, you know, I, I don't know, I, I hardly know any lawyer. I don't really know the, what the profession does. Uh, I say, if you are touched one way or the other, uh, dwell on it a little bit, you know, think about it. Um, what you may 
uh, don't throw it out of the window. Oh, there's nothing I can do. Think about it. If you um, you care, if you think about it, you know, ideas will land at, on your at your door. I think. Uh, now we have another question from our audience. Yes? Did, um, did some of these lawyers find success when litigating these cases? Were they able to win? Or, like it was said at the end, is the justice system stacked, stacked so against these lawyers that they didn't find much success in helping your clients? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um. They are, they lose, uh, well, in China, uh, criminal cases, any, any cases, cross board, um, the uh, conviction rate is 99%. <laughs> so human rights cases, uh, basically 100%, almost 100%, and only in the 10 years that I watching uh, uh, reporting human rights in China, uh, only just a couple cases where the lawyers through their work were able to uh, get their clients, like the Feminist the Five in 2015, uh, released without being indicted. But that particular case was due to um, not proper uh, exercise of, uh, uh, of uh, the procedure, but uh, because of uh, the tsunami-like international um, coverage and, and pressure. So, um, yes, they're very, very unsuccessful as, uh, uh, as far as uh, carrying your case through the uh, procedure, through the uh, indictment, uh, through the trial. So, very unsuccessful. But uh, the very fact that uh, the, there are these lawyers taking on um, these cases uh, make they when they meet their uh, clients in detention center in prison, they bring out their messages. They make it to the known to the public. And when at the time when they were between, I think before 2014, the lawyers could still uh, have actually have a trial, even though citizens were not allowed to go into. To, to listen, but they were they were still able to carry on trials for a day, four day, two days, three days, and they bring out the uh, um, the, uh, the their clients, the defendants, a statement, court statement, and so it all became a. Uh, uh, did you see what I see? It became a trial uh, by the public. Uh, in the law, uh, in the in, in the court inside the courtroom, they always always lose, but uh, they win big in the court of uh, uh, public opinion. But uh, the the CCP has figured that out, unfortunately. So uh, that's why they don't want these lawyers to leave the travel outside the country. They don't want you to speak. Or they don't want to. Um, uh, uh, these days, in some cases, they don't even want you to hire your own lawyer. And they threaten these lawyers, if you disclose any information about the case, you are going to be disbarred. Okay. So in the very, very uh, good example is the blank paper uh, detainees. So some of them got human rights lawyers. Uh, one of the lawyer at the beginning scene, he didn't speak, sitting on the very left. Now she's, he is a, his name is Zhang Lei, lawyer Zhang Lei. He is representing uh, Cao Zhuxi. Remember a few days ago, there's a young woman uh, in the video said, don't let us disappear, please help us, and, and that, that girl. And he's representing, but uh, we hear very, very little. This is very different from before. We hear very little uh, lawyers. Uh, lawyers themselves uh, are threatened, and uh, parents, uh, because most parents don't have experience, all of a sudden your kids were, uh, are detained for what? 
uh, I mean, the uh, police came to you. If you speak out, if you speak to foreign media, if you speak, speak to these anti-China forces overseas, and you're going to blah, 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 we're gonna, uh, your, your daughter, your son is going to be uh, put in jail. This is not good for them, not good for yourself. And, and this, uh, these people are, they're hyping up things. They have uh, other intentions you don't understand. So listen to us, listen to the government. So that's uh, most of the parents are very, very easily uh, hoodwinked into this sort of a persuasion and narrative. Um, so if, uh, um, so today the situation is uh, different is because we don't have, a, we have mm -hmm. a, a uh, information black hole mm -hmm. these days. We just, it's unlike 10 years ago. We simply don't hear anything anymore, not much. Yeah, um, I'll add some. Uh, I think, yeah, of course, overall, the, uh, uh, most of the cases uh, won in public opinion, but they lose in court. But even the losing ones, uh, their uh, opinion, for example, uh, can become very important uh, if there's rule of law in China in the future. You know, that, uh, uh, like here, you know, if you have a winning case, like the ruling of the judge that can become future presidents to court. I think that's what the, you know, we already have, like all these um, uh, legal uh, opinions like the, in the difference what they have done, they have done that. Um, and uh, um, there are some cases, like there's one case that's uh, very, uh, yeah, telling that uh, there's like a, there was one case that's a wrongful conviction of of murder or you know, something, and it was overturned re uh, recently. Uh, but the lawyers who worked on that case uh, were either in prison or in exile. Yeah, that's sometimes uh, yeah, that's, that's that shows the, the situation yeah, in China. As to the uh, feminist uh, five, yeah, that. Uh, that shows the, the importance of international pressure uh, because of the tsunami of international uh, calling for their release. They were released. And it had a tremendous impact later because today when we look at the uh, A4 uh, blank paper uh, movements, uh, you know, the uh, women, uh, they, they are like the uh, leaders, the, the, the core uh, uh, activists in this movement. And a lot of them, I think they, 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 they are uh, you know, followers of the earlier feminists. Yeah. Yeah. So this, uh, they are a very important part of the, uh, the, the uh, movements today. Because of that success, you know, there, we are seeing some important change today. Yeah, speaking of a case, uh, I just want to elaborate. It's another thing. I actually want to make another documentary just about that case, but it's very difficult uh, to film the lawyers inside China. Uh, just the act of filming them. Uh, interviewing them, even even if it's about an uh, old case, it's very dangerous. They just don't want you to do anything. I could have sent my cameraman to, to jail. Uh, I don't want to risk that. So uh, two, uh, I think uh, three or four years ago, um, a uh, Jiangxi uh, Supreme uh, Superior uh, People's Court overturned a uh, 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 death sentence case. Um, four men were charged uh, of raping uh, and uh, killing a, uh, a young woman uh, more than a decade ago, uh, two decades ago. And in 2008, uh, lawyer Li Heping is the person who was dragged from office building to a, uh, that lawyer find out about this case in two, first in 2008 and did something. So these four people were, uh, their case was upheld 
uh, the, 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 uh, the verdict was upheld, but uh, they were not sentenced immediately. So their life for the, uh, uh, the first stage of the, of the fight, they were li their life was uh, uh, saved for the moment. And, and uh, from 2008 to, um, I think, uh, three or four years, um, when, they were, when the case was over, verdict was overturned, the four men were set free. Over the years, about 10 years, uh, I heard like 20 some lawyers worked on this case, pursued it, just to set these four men free. And they were innocent. So, um, uh, and these lawyers, it, it, it's, very, it's a very telling case. It's very, very rare in China very rare for this kind of a history, um, no, th this kind of a uh, uh, victory. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, scores of uh, lawyers fighting over years for no pay, um, uh, you know, it's very, uh, I, 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 uh, uh, I mean, when I think of uh, uh, China, I, in general, because uh, my work involves so many sad stories, uh, and uh, I often have this uh, sad picture about uh, China. I don't see China, uh, ro China as a rosy place at all. But uh, every so often, uh, these strangers, they're strangers to me too, um, their story, the things they are willing to fight for, the, uh, the prices that they have been uh, paying, the sacrifices they're making, they make me feel like uh, um, as if my myself is worthier than I actually am. <laughs> you know, they make uh, our all uh, human beings a little more, this a little more um, nobler. Uh, and uh, so for that, uh, we, I thank him. Uh, I thank them very much. The answer is very simple. I want the whole world work together to knock down, and with the uh, progresses we will see uh, in technology, knock down the, the, uh, the uh, Great Firewall. Right. Uh, I mean, um, uh, even you know, with all the surveillance, the control, uh, there is a virtual community for uh, freedom-loving Chinese, uh, and this uh, was what happened the, uh, during the um, you know, two months of uh, last year, last two months, you know, the, the uh, black paper protests, uh, I, I call it, I always call it, call it a cloud uh, movement, uh, even though uh, the, uh, people was watched, we were, we are a lot of people uh, if we are connected because we share information on Twitter, on uh, Telegram, on Instagram. Uh, you know, at the uh, night when the Shanghai the protest, you know, people were chanting down with CCP, uh, there was one live broadcast on Instagram that has like over 10,000, uh, no, 100,000 live viewer. Yeah, that's like tremendous, yeah, beyond imagination. And during the movements, even in China, even the platforms like Douyin, WeChat, and uh, Kuai Shou, they were flooded just with videos of different protests. Uh, uh, so uh, there is this capacity there. Uh, it's like a volcano. Yeah. Uh, of course, for now, the government always has the upper hand, uh, 
and I believe there's a lot uh, that uh, we, uh, you know, international community can do. Uh, and that's where I think uh, uh, United States has basically given up uh, the, the, the um, policy uh, making uh, power to China. Basically, China is dominating the policy on internet uh, freedom of speech, and we have to uh, change. For example, um, you know, like now uh, there's a lot of talk of uh, banning TikTok. Uh, as I, I, I always I support that. I, I think WeChat is way more dangerous than TikTok. Uh, yeah, and we should have like a reciprocal kind of treatment from the beginning. For example, if you know Google is not allowed in China, we should not allow Chinese company to trade. You know, like we, we can. Choose and pick. Yeah. I think that uh, yeah, was uh, uh, kind of ignored in the in the past, and uh, uh, the policy, the circle are still trying to grasp this situation, uh, kind of slow and uh, uh, ineffective now. So, uh, there's, but there's a lot we can do on, on this technology front. Okay. I, I want to add something. Uh, when you think about uh, uh, internet uh, in China, uh, let's not think it as if uh, they're a great firewall and all these censorships are like uh, uh, slabs of uh, rocks or sheets of uh, metals that they can set up. The internet, remember, even in China, is a porous, porous place, right? So uh, the, uh, during the lockdown in Shanghai, I made the two compilations of the video clips out of Shanghai because I, I in April last uh, April I inst instinct instinctively felt like a Shanghai lockdown is going to be a historical event, uh, economically and politically, uh, and uh, mm, uh, uh, other than just the lockdown. So I uh, I have a researcher. So I watched, uh, in April and uh, May, I watched about 3,000 clips. From the 3,000 clips, I made two compilations. It's, in, on, it's on the, our channel uh, on YouTube. So if you look at the second clip, uh, the, uh, 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 no, let's not talk about our clips. So Shanghai has a two, uh, 25 million population, okay? If, uh, oh, 1%, 1%, every one person out of every 100 Shanghainese are posting something, you know, or making a comment, or posting a picture, telling their family picture, or shoot a, a, a video of something. Are you doing that? We, you have, a, in that one city, you have, a, from that one city, you have 25,000 people <laughs> giving you these messages, right? And, and bring you these pictures to you. Does the government like that? No, not a bit. Can they completely shut it down? If they want, they can. Do they dare? They don't dare. See, that's a, there's a dynamic there, the forces there. So I say it's finally uh, in the, uh, by the suppose, the, the, all the measures are there, all the censorships are there, which has become, uh, which have become very, very sophisticated and complicated. Suppose they are there, okay? Suppose they are enhanced every day. Still, as long as they're not, I am always joke, I joked this for t several years. I said, why are the CCP cutting off the, uh, the cable under, uh, under the sea, you know? Uh, that's your final solution. As long as the internet is there, people are finding ways uh, to gather, to pass on information, to um, just do things. It's a lot, a uh, lot, uh, 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 lot harder than we hear, all free. But, uh, but, uh, um, so in Shanghai, you out of the uh, 25 million, if only one out of a thousand, I think there are way more people doing that. Uh, it's more like a 
1%, which probably isn't that high estimate. So you have 25,000 people uh, post, actively posting and speaking up and doing. So in our second compilation, we have a good collection over 10 minutes of uh, men, women, uh, old and young, uh, leaders of the uh, neighborhood committee and, uh, 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 you know, uh, citizen journalists and blah, 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 they're all voicing their, uh, their opinions, their commentary, what's wrong with the, the government and w uh, what they think uh, is the government should be doing. And this, uh, so it's very, um, it's very, uh, one thing I do want our audience always, uh, when you think about China, always keep in mind is that uh, uh, even though with the uh, economics, uh, uh, economic development, um, we have not had a democracy, which hasn't brought democracy to China, but uh, that doesn't mean it's not changing China. I think China has been changing as a result uh, as the result of uh, economic development, which is uh, people are uh, more wealthy, people do want more. And if you look at uh, uh, what they say during Shanghai, Shanghai isn't uh, known for a uh, uh, hot bar, uh, uh, harbor of uh, hotbed of uh, uh, dis dis dissent. So, um, but during the lockdown, it's very, very lively. So I think uh, uh, the change is here, the political power is strong, but uh, somehow in the near future or um, somewhere in the future, there'll be a titanic change and it will all come out to the surface. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much to both of you for taking the time. Sadly, our panel comes to an end. Mm -hmm. If you'll please join me in thanking our two panelists for this beautiful presentation. I really appreciate this opportunity, and thank you, Kwon Yin. And thank, thank you. So thank you so much to our audience members, both in person, in our locations, and online, on YouTube and live stream, for joining us tonight. First, we'll be taking a group picture with the speakers. Please come up and join us if you would like to share that photo. And secondly, for those of you who wish, our panelists will be having dinner with us in John Lee, uh, immediately following the panel. So please feel free to join us. Those without dining plans, please let me know. Thank you. Please, let's do it. <laughs> I, I love, gave me something to be posted on Twitter. <laughs>